What is up everyone, we are back with another tutorial and on this one I am going to show you how to install RetroArch on retail mode for your Xbox Series X or S consoles and if you're like me and had previously installed this on dev mode and you come back to it and it's all broken, nothing works, your USB hard drive is not being recognized as because Xbox has updated their security patches and has actually made it harder to um, use a RetroArch with an external hard drive but there are ways of going around this and on this video I'm going to show you how to do this so if you're following this guide and you want to install RetroArch for retail version um, then you do run into a couple of risks and that is the potential of being banned from Xbox Live because running RetroArch does violate the Microsoft Store Terms of Service violation and as such does put you at a legitimate risk of being banned from Xbox Live. Um, that being said though, will Microsoft actively start banning accounts who use RetroArch or, or will they just get rid of it altogether, um, which most likely will not be the case but there is still the risk associated with retail mode as opposed to running RetroArch on dev mode. So if you are following this guide and still want to install RetroArch on retail mode, you will, you will be accepting the risk of your account being banned. Um, so don't blame me, I'm just showing you how to do the steps. But I, I do advise uh, running RetroArch on dev mode if you do plan to um, use it quite often. First things first, what you want to do is you want to obviously have a Microsoft account and have a computer or a Mac or any computing device, it could be a phone, any Linux devices uh, and also you would need a USB drive which is formatted to NTFS and I will show you how to properly do that uh, later on in the tutorial. Um, you can also use the SSD as well. There are a special way of uh, allowing security on the NTFS drive, which previously you didn't have to do, but because of the extra measures with the new update, you do have to change a couple of things once you format the drive. It's actually a lot easier to run RetroArch nowadays. Um, when this first sort of came out and everyone was experimenting there was a lot of bugs and issues I had with RetroArch it crashing and a lot of games not supported and the annoying thing of it being on dev mode is once you exit out of dev mode you have the risk of deleting all the side loaded apps there is a um, app that you can actually uh, install to prevent you from deleting your RetroArch and whatever side loaded apps you have on your Xbox. Uh, in this case we, we don't need to do any of that, we don't need to whitelist the Xbox. All you have to do is go on to Microsoft Edge browser, click on that, and then you want to type in gamer13.github.io If you're just searching for it, it will be this Gamer13's repo. And here you can see all the apps that you can install for your Xbox. And the first thing we want is RetroArch. Click on download, open. This will then run in the background. We also need Durango FTP. And this software is a godsend. This kind of eliminates My Files Explorer. In fact, this is just to load all your games or config files onto the internal storage of your Xbox. So we definitely want this. Click on install. Let's go back. I don't think RetroWatch did that. So we need to make sure it opens up the Microsoft page click on download okay, what else we have we have flycast for dreamcast uh, standalone dreamcast emulator duck station probably get the pp ssp 
definitely need that one. That's a good one to get. Um, what else? We've got Moonlight if you want to stream your PC from your Xbox. Um, let's go ahead and get Duck Station. You can also download a couple of games here. I'm pretty sure there are more games, but these are just like homebrew games you can just play on your Xbox. So yeah. So it looks like we still have uh, RetroArch still installing, uh, so we'll come back once it's done. Alright, so RetroArch is completely finished installing, so let's go ahead and open this up. And there's a few things we need to do to prep this. And the first thing we want to do is go on to Online Updater. And I'm just going to update Assets. Update controller profiles, cheats if you want to update that, if you plan to use cheats, uh, update databases, overlays, slang shaders as well. Now eventually I will turn the on-demand thumbnail downloads once I compile like a playlist and have all my ROMs ready so that they will have uh, screenshots and box art, but I'm going to turn that off for now. And head over to settings and then input. Go over to hotkeys. And then menu toggle controller combo. So to exit any of the ROMs or any games, uh, we want to set a hotkey so it's easier to back out or change any settings while you're playing a game. And I'm going to choose, what I normally choose is start and select, but you can um, choose any of these if you desire to. Right, so now we want to just back out, back out again, and find video. And click on synchronization, and we want to turn on automatic frame delay. And this will actually help with a lot of uh, input delay with some of the ROMs, and it will adjust the frame rate, the FPS accordingly. So performance will be a lot better once you turn this on. But if you're more versatile with RetroArch, you can actually change the frame delay and tweak things as desired. And then from here, you can actually change the scaling of this. So if you want, uh, if you want to leave all your ROMs uh, widescreen mode to fit your TV, then you can actually turn this off. If you want to preserve the ROM so it will display by a 4 by 3 ratio then you can turn this on and it will result in your TV having like black borders around but this will be displayed how the ROMs or the games should have been displayed turn this off if you want your games to be stretched and in widescreen mode so this is a matter of uh, personal preference really I'm going to turn mine on so once you've done that, just go back and the last thing we want to do is we want to go on to user interface. We want to disable a couple of things just so RetroArch will run smoother once you load it up. So click on menu item visibility and find show explore. I'm actually going to turn this off because this has previously caused issues where it just makes RetroArch crash or non-responsive. So I'm definitely going to turn that off. You can also turn off show favorites or images. Probably going to turn off show music and images because I'm, I don't plan to store any of these on my RetroArch. Uh, Netplay. We leave that on. I'm gonna leave history on to see what ROMs I've played previously. Um, I think that should be it. Back out, back out again, and then the last thing we want to do is we want to save what we have changed here. So we want to click on Main Menu, Configuration File, Save Current Configuration. Press back. Quit RetroArch. 
and now when we load it back up it should look a lot smoother or the font looks smoother and uh, actually better but I'm gonna change back to the the menu that I'm used to um, so on the settings on input settings and video so I'm just gonna change it up to a menu that I prefer which kind of looks like the PS3 menu which is um, under drivers click on the menu and it's the XMB one that I want so if I load it back up we have this menu again which I prefer for uh, box art and thumbnails so load up uh, Durango FTP and as you can see here on local app data storage uh, there is a limitation of 30 gigabytes for uh, for using this on retail mode which isn't too bad of a deal nowadays like with uh, the latest update of RetroWatch being able to run pretty much everything on USB now as opposed to before where there was a certain amount of uh, ROMs that exceed 4.5 gigs or 4 gigs and you literally have to install it internally else it will not run. I mean this doesn't bother me too much there isn't too many games that I need to install internally again there are some games that you do need to run from the internal storage SSD drive but most of the games will run on USB or any USB drive using the latest RetroArch build. The limitations for Durango FTP internally for retail mode is 30 gigabytes. This is actually really simple to start up. You can pretty much leave everything as is and then just click start and this will link your Xbox to your PC. Here is my USB drive. It is a Toshiba one, Toshiba 2.5 inch, two terabyte hard drive and this will also work with any other flash drive or even if you have a SSD this will work as well so we need to make sure your file format is NTFS like before it didn't really matter the Xbox or RetroArch within Xbox will just accept any USB drive but now we have to change it to NTFS to be able to run our games from this drive here and we also need to change a few of the security settings in order for the Xbox to actually appear. So if we click on security, or we'll obviously make sure this is uh, the right file format, so if you haven't done already, so that if your file format is FAT32 or XFAT, right click and format, sorry. So right click format, choose the right file system, and then once you've done this will be blank and then right click again click on properties click on security I've already made the changes here but you won't see this here so click on advanced and then click add select a principle and then advanced find now and we're looking for all application packages okay on that okay again and this is where we need to make sure full control is ticked under basic permissions so make sure full controls are on uh, don't worry about this click OK and then I want to click on replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permission entries from this object click apply and then it will give me a warning um, I want to press yes it will probably come up with another error at some point because I have a bunch of ROMs and files under here but it might not but if it does um, then you just click OK but if you're running from a fresh 
hard drive then um, this shouldn't take too long all right so it's done now and then I can just press OK press OK again the next thing we want to do is we want to connect to our Xbox so we have Doringo FTP running on our Xbox and now open up any file explorer type in FTP semicolon forward slash forward slash Xbox click OK and here we are we are in the root of our Xbox's internal storage which before used to be quite uh, problematic to get this set up with um, having to change some of the credentials and permissions um, and now with this Doringo FTP it's it's so quick to actually do anything internally and actually makes it a lot better and a lot easier than using Mile Files Explorer and we can actually change a lot of things in here do note there is the 30 gigabyte limit so within your RetroArch folder there's only a certain amount of games you can actually put on the SSD unless you are running this from dev mode but on retail mode that is the limitation All right, so first thing is click on local folder find your retro arch folder and you can tell which is the retro arch folder is because this will have like an AC folder, app data, local cache, local state double click local state and then here we have all of our folders and is there anything in here a couple of things in here we can actually copy some of these folders onto our USB drive so let's copy config playlists saves states system and thumbnails screenshots as well copy this um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I can redirect retro arch so these folders here I can redirect it to our USB drive so I paste that here So eventually, once I've gotten a RetroArt set up, I will redirect anything it saves onto here. So our system here is where the BIOS goes. And then if I make any playlists, it will be saved here. So this is actually future proof, just in case RetroArch on retail mode will break or they decide to not support it and then we can roll back to dev mode and instead of making a complete fresh install of RetroArch um, we can reinstall RetroArch and then still keep our save data or BIOSes, playlists or, and thumbnails and save states we can just reload that onto the Xbox uh, so this is optional but I'm just going to show you my setup here you can just save everything onto the internal but just in case it's good to have a backup on your oh, USB drive alright so I've got a folder here and this will have folders for your BIOSes to go into your system folder of your RetroArch and none of these actually contain any of the BIOSes for these uh, consoles just because that will be illegal distribution if I did that and I, my channel could get deleted, I guess. Um, so you're going to have to search Google or whatever search engine to get those files. But these are the folders that you do need to reside in the system folder. So we have DC for Dreamcast, Dolphin, MU for the Wii and GameCube, FB Neo for your arcades, uh, Neo Geo CD, PCSX2 so BIOS goes in there for that that's your PS2 folder PPSSP 
your PSP, Sega CD BIOS, and Sega Saturn BIOS. So these are just folders ready made for you to copy onto your internal system folder of your RetroArch. This may take around, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your network speed. So we will return once this is done. Okay, so once you have transferred all the folders into the right place, again, you can download this uh, from the description below. This is what our system folder looks like. And I've also done the same thing under my root of my USB drive, the system folder here that actually has my BIOS files. Now, if you want to add games to your internal uh, storage of your RetroArch, then you can just go onto the local state, right click, new folder, and then call it games. Now, the good thing is that the new update of RetroArch allows you to play pretty much all of these ROMs from your USB drive and there isn't that limitation where originally with the PS2 games anything above that 3.5 limit will mean that you have to install it internally so now anything above that limit 3.5 uh, gigabytes I can actually just play and I think the compatibility list has improved a lot because when I first put uh, well, trying out PS2 games, a lot of them would crash or stutter. I did have a problem with GTA, uh, GTA San Andreas that had an issue with <coughs> sound tearing and frame rate drops. But now everything seems to run a lot smoother and it actually helps with the threshold of the internal storage device you don't have to pick and choose which games you want to install or transfer even Wii games as well they will just run from the USB drive there are some exceptions to this if you have any DOS box games you do have to transfer them internally as well as a Commodore 64 games you have to put them into the internal drive if you have some PlayStation 1 games that have multiple bin and queue files, for this for instance it has several, at least 20 bin files and Duck Station for RetroArch will not be able to run this. So be aware of that, you do have to compress these files ideally to PBP or just one bin and queue. So be aware of that if you are trying to run several bin several bin files of a PlayStation 1 game um, it will not run on duck station apart from that all of these will just run from this drive here so I'm ready to close this and plug in my USB drive onto the Xbox Let's plug in your USB drive uh, do not choose uh, for Xbox games because that will format it to FAT32 or XFAT you want to just use it for media device instead. So let's go ahead and just check our how much memory we have. So I still have 28.4 gigabytes of internal storage because I didn't actually transfer any games onto the um, RetroArch folder. But yeah, that is again the limitations of using RetroArch for retail version. So be aware of that if you are trying out some games um, that have to be run on the internal storage. Right, so once everything is in place, I'm going to load up RetroArch. Ignore that message. That's just telling me that uh, the FTP is now closed. And there is one thing I forgot to mention. And that is once you turn on the security configurations for your hard drive uh, you want to go down to file browser and show files and directories 
so it will show any hidden files or if you have sub directories within your ROM files make sure you turn this on so then all your ROMs will show up so I'm ready to actually add some playlists uh, before I do that I'm going to change the directory actually so go under the settings and directory you can just press one up from here just to get to it easier and I need to locate or well, these folders of so system folder the configs folder and Q is the internal storage device so on retail mode the USB drive will be under D drive so let's go back out again system BIOS D drive my BIOS files are in this system folder here. Use this directory. Uh, ignore downloads, ignore assets, uh, thumbnails. We did make a thumbnail folder. There's again this one here. And configs. Do not touch cores because if you uh, if you change the cores folder, then that will um, just break RetroArch. So again, do not touch the cores folder and playlists. Save files. And that's it, that's all you need to do for our directories. Again, if you didn't make those directories on your USB drive, then you don't have to do this, just leave them be. All right, so let's go ahead and make a playlist. So scan directory, D drive. I'm not gonna scan the folders I showed you because they have too many ROMs that'll be here for too long. To wait for them to load because this does take depending on how many ROMs you have this could take uh, several hours um, so I do have a um, bunch of test games here so you scan this directory it has a couple of Dreamcast games a couple of GameCube games Mega Drive PS1 can actually just load a single game over here so all your games will be under D drive for retail version and then if it's on dev mode then it will be on the E drive so if I click on games or just games test Uh, so it automatically loaded the correct core for the Dreamcast game. If I want to back out of it, I press start and select the hotkey that you've chosen. Let's load up another game. Getting D drive, games test. Let's do a PS2 game. Actually, let's do a Saturn game. Now it's asking me to choose a core. So it's the Sega Saturn one. Now there's a few here, so you can try out which core you prefer.
And if you have any games installed into your internal SSD drive, then I'm going to go and load content and it's under your Q drive. And all the directories for your RetroArch is here. So if you made a folder called games, it will be there. And that's where you link your directories to the internal drive. Now let's make a playlist. So if you go down to import content, we can do a manual scan if there isn't a preloaded uh, setup for your uh, emulation or you can just scan directory which will do it automatically so D drive got a couple of games here to test so scan this directory you can do multiple at a time if you do have like thousands of games then this will again take a few hours to scan and load up the playlist so this should just add a playlist for each core sometimes um, it may miss some of the ROMs if it does then you do have to do a manual scan Uh, so for instance I have a bunch of Atomus Wave games which uses the Flycast or Naomi Dreamcast core and it doesn't actually save it as Atomus Wave so I have to do a manual scan select where those ROMs are so game test if I do games Atomus Wave scan this directory system name you have to create your own so if I do custom then call it a Thomas wave select my default core so it shares the same one as the Dreamcast go all the way down so Flycast is the one I want and then we can actually just press start scan if I go back and there it's compiled all of my Thomas Wave games and if I press one of them click run it should just automatically choose the Dreamcast Flycast core so there we go looking good so all of these are pretty much arcade games so press select that's for your coins So here's our playlists for GameCube, Saturn, and PlayStation. So I've just turned on automatic thumbnail downloads. So by doing this, it will pop up with 
box up. Also set the screenshots on the left side or vice versa. Let's see if I can run Smash Bros Melee. This uses the Dolphin core. Everything is uh, running quite smoothly. A lot better than before. If we press start and select, we can actually go on to the core options and change the resolution if you desire to. You actually up the resolution for GameCube. And you could do widescreen hack as well. This is all sort of a uh, bit more in depth for some of the settings that you desire, but it's, it's down to you to kind of change this. I'm leaving it for default for the minute. So if I back out of this, oops. Okay, I just had to back out and go back in again and our Dreamcast games are here. So again, if I press start and select, I can go into the core options and up the resolution. So by default, it's only, uh, it only shows 640 by 480. So we can actually do that to like 2K, I think, or 4K. So the Xbox uh, Series X is powerful enough to display uh, ROMs in 4K resolution, but again, um, certain PS2 games there will be some slowdowns Let's back out of this and the last thing we're going to do is just try a PS2 game. Uh, before I do that I'll just quickly show you how to change the box art and screenshots. So you want to go into user interface, appearance. and. When you click on thumbnails, you can actually change that. Just do left thumbnail. So this will be the, we could do box art for the left side, screenshot on the right side. Let's change this color here. For the background, we can choose whichever color you like. Midnight blue seems to work for me, so let's go back out. If I click on online updater, you can actually manually um, download the thumbnails for your playlists. If I click that, it will just download all the relative uh, box art and screenshots for that playlist. And again, this will save onto my USB drive. Uh, because I've directed the directory to my USB drive. So if I need to reinstall RetroArch, I can just, I don't have to re-download every single thumbnail or box art. So yeah, I think I prefer the box art to be on the right side, but you can kind of set up yourself 
whichever way you feel looks best for you. Let's go ahead and load up a PS2 game. So again, if I press start and select or your hotkey present, uh, click on core options and you can actually change the memory card slot to eight megabytes or 32. It's recommended to just do eight, um, just because some games may not uh, be compatible with 32 megabyte memory card. Um, we can leave the core options as is. You can actually switch to boot to BIOS, so this will just boot to the main menu of the PS2 if you need to change the memory card settings or delete some save data. Let's switch this to 4K, native 4K. And you can actually change that aspect ratio as well to widescreen or standard. And we're not going to go ahead and talk about the frame skip. That's only for games that have trouble running on RetroArch for the Xbox series. If you want to, you can enable cheats. and also hacks as well. So yeah, that is pretty much how you load up and make playlists for your ROMs on RetroWatch. And it's it makes life so much easier that you can just um, play most of your games on the USB drive and everything runs very smooth. So this is definitely improved since the last time I messed around with RetroWatch on the Xbox series. Be aware that Retro Arch on retail mode may put you at risk for being banned. So it is recommended to actually just run this on dev mode. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then please comment down below. And I'll see you again on another tutorial.